Moss, you ready? Yep. We're on. Uh. Okay, now you're live. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you again for, for coming, and, and we certainly want to make sure that we, we roll out information as much as possible uh, to the media so that we can get our keep our, our public informed as to what, what's going on. Um, <clears throat> the latest on the, the typhoon and tropical storm, uh, uh, we're obviously it's, it's passing us. And so today at two o'clock, we're going to uh, declare, uh, uh, cancel, cancel, cancel the, the conditions. Uh, and at four o'clock, uh, four or five, five o'clock, we will uh, most likely uh, for Saipan and Tinian. This is only for Saipan and Tinian. Uh, we will uh, uh, declare all clear. And then for Rhoda, uh, because it's still uh, experiencing uh, some really strong gusts of winds, we will. Uh, <coughs> do the cancellation of conditions at about four o'clock, four or five. And uh, by eight o'clock, hopefully we can declare all clear for Rhoda tonight, 8 p.m. Uh, <clears throat> Saipan and Tinian, no, no damage at all. Uh, there was, a, of course, some uh, debris, uh, branches, but those are minor and it's been cleared. Uh, Tini and I, I think, had a, a power line down, but that's that's been fixed by CUC already. Rhoda is uh, a, a lot more uh, impacted, and so they're doing assessments right now. Uh, uh, it's, it's not a white assessment, but it's... Uh, Consolidated and uh, uh, consolidated team from the from the, the government to go out carefully go out go on to all the roadways to make sure that that uh, the roads are clear and and to look at where we need to bring uh, equipments to clear the roads if necessary. Uh, I saw uh, on one of the photos that was provided us. There's a, a telephone pole that a call crossed a road somewhere, and so those has to be uh, uh, cleared and addressed. Uh, power is down, is out in Rhoda. Uh, the power plant is is okay. Uh, there's some moisture to one of the engines, so they shut that down. Uh, but power is out in Rhoda right now. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, lines that are down, uh, the hardware is and uh, needs to be fixed. So the, the distribution system needs to be to be fixed. And pending uh, uh, availability of uh, transport, uh, we're working with the Department of Defense and FEMA to get the transport uh, in for, you know, maybe a, a military helicopter or a military uh, C-130 to to bring some uh, equipments down to Rhoda for CUC, as well as some generators for the major infrastructure like hospital and, and, and other infrastructure that needs to be powered up 
on wells, uh, uh, water wells and, and such. Uh, so we're waiting to get clearance. In fact, uh, the special assistance for uh, Homeland Security is on a call with uh, the JRM, Joint Region Marianas, uh, going through uh, an assessment and, uh, and putting together a plan for RODA and what needs to. One of the, the, the key uh, component, of course, in this is the, the, uh, the airports. Uh, we need to, um, the uh, Department of Defense uh, are needing to do a professional assessment of the RODA runways, whether it could, whereas C-130 can land or, you know, what kind of, of equipments can, can land there. So they're, they're doing that assessment. They're going to be doing that assessment uh, either today, late today, or tomorrow morning before a lot of these movements can occur. Um, we're, we're very fortunate that uh, there has been no fatalities, uh, at least in Rhoda also. And, and you know, it's just uh, the minor things that needs to be taken care of. Uh, Obviously, the, we're going to uh, learn a lot from, from the Rota case and, and uh, um, be able to, to address those in the future, uh, whether it's the, the water system, uh, the power system, um, the shelters, the infrastructures and whatnot, and the equipment that we need to replace there on Rhoda because it's Rhoda is a, a, a lot different in in that it's a little bit more isolated than let's say Tinian Saipan uh, uh, the ports are a, a large uh, a, a little larger than than Rhoda so that's usually the challenge is the transport of things to to get going on Rhoda but uh, we're in contact we just had a briefing with the mayor. Uh, of Rhoda, and uh, again, as we speak, FEMA and the Joint Region Marianas and the Special Assistant for Homeland Security are having a a briefing on how to to get those things addressed. So uh, we're 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 again we're very fortunate uh, that uh, the, uh, the, uh, the the typhoon didn't hit us. We're we're we sympathize with our brothers and sisters in Guam. I just uh, talked to uh, Governor Lou and Lieutenant Governor uh, Joss and uh, absolutely offered our help, our assistance in, in whatever way we can help to let us know. And they'll be calling us later on today or tomorrow uh, as they continue their assessment. And so they're, they're actually going through that process right now with uh, not just with the government of Guam, Guam Power Authority, uh, but also with the Joint Region Marianas and the military. So let's keep them in our prayers, both the people of Rhoda and the people of Guam. Governor, if I could just uh, ask, you, you said you're expecting to learn a lot based on uh, the circumstances on Rhoda. I do want to point out, though, that in terms of the issue with the hospital generator, that issue has been an issue since December. Mm -hmm. The DPW heavy equipment out of service issue has been an issue for months as well. Mm -hmm. You were lieutenant governor in the past administration, and you're governor now. So why is it? Were we prepared? And what specifically? No, no, those, those, those generators have been sitting there. It's been on site then. And only recently, after we closed down COVID, because those were COVID-related uh, generators, uh, we decided to source those out. One was going to DOC, the Department of Corrections, and the other one was supposed to go down to, to the Rota Health Center. And that decision was just made after we closed down COVID. Uh, obviously, uh, one of the issues with that, I believe, was the transportation those are not small uh that was not a small uh, uh equipment that's a, it's a, a very big equipment to send down to rota and so 
uh, let me let me let me make a point that uh, and you know this uh, I was out of of the decision making process for two years prior to me being elected and inaugurated that's that's a fact I mean, nobody will dispute that I will not dispute that so uh, in terms of those decisions uh, most of those decisions were made out of this the previous folks that used to run uh, Homeland Security and uh, the emergency system. So, uh, public works, uh, I understand uh, from, from, uh, from the present secretary of public works that those, those equipments were pretty new. They were purchased, uh, they were not, uh, they were not old. They were, they were, were uh, recent purchases through OIA grants. And uh, maintenance, of course, is always an issue. Uh, we have a, a, a payload that was supposed to be operable for your uh, landfill. It's now inoperable because of uh, uh, ele electronic uh, issue. Uh, those should have been addressed. As, as you well know, uh, and, and I've reached out to to the municipality of Rhoda. Uh, it's let me just put it in context here. A little bit of my context is uh, each municipality, Rhoda and Tinian had three million dollars apiece for two years to uh, ARPA, and previous administration also had a substantial amount of funding uh, from community disaster loans, and even CARES Act. Should we have addressed those, those, those issues? Yes, absolutely. The fact that we didn't, but we had the resources now make, makes the challenge uh, bigger. But uh, nevertheless, those challenges and those issues have been addressed, uh, I mean, um, uh, identified, and so, uh, you know, uh, I will sit down with the mayor of Rhoda, go down the, 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 the laundry list of things that we need to do to make sure that all those real fundamental things like a water tank, a reserve water tank for the shelters are there, uh, working equipment, heavy equipment, uh, because there's, there's nothing we can do about uh, about the ports right now, when 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 Rhoda Sports, the, the channel closes, it it certainly closes, and, and so we always have to just fly things in emergency. And we're very fortunate right now that uh, JRM Joint Region Marianas is is uh, and FEMA and uh, our Homeland Security and Emergency uh, Management Office are on the ball to get those things resolved immediately. And uh, just my second question before passing it on, I wanted to talk about federal and local share for the cost of what is to come. Uh, you mentioned about helping Guam, um, so I just wanted to ask two questions under that umbrella. Number one, what what cost are we expected to um, incur uh, and what will the local share be? And you know, given that, uh, are we expecting a different type of declaration from the president in the coming days? Yeah, uh, so, you know, uh, we will make those assessments. I, I, I would venture to say and, uh, that as far as Saipan and Tina is concerned, the cost is going to be very minimal. We need to make a, an accurate assessment of what we need to do with Rhoda and what the assets are that we need to provide, the resources we need to provide, and how long that's going to take. Uh, I can tell you it's going to be below maybe $30 million or, or two, even below $20 million. Uh, but we need to have backup generators in order that are maintained properly. Uh, we need to have working heavy equipment, okay, uh, and Sit down with CUC and say and, and and see what needs to get done with with maybe additional reservoirs, 
needs to be built in 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 Songsung around Songsung Village, and additional reservoirs needs to be um, built to serve uh, Sinopalo, for example. And you know we need to have a, a robust training program for for folks from the airports, the seaports. Uh, those are critical, very, very critical infrastructure uh, to address emergencies. Um, in no. regards to attending assistance to Guam, um, there are also NMI citizens that are living in Guam. So any plan on how exactly we're going to extend help to those NMI citizens in Guam? Well, you know, uh, yeah, uh, I don't really want to single out seeing my residents that are living in Guam in general or specifically because the help that we can extend to Guam is for everybody, the people of Guam. Now, I'm not just going to go and help the folks that are coming from the Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. They live there and so they are part of, the, of, of, of those people that are impacted in Guam. So whatever assistance is, is, is from the people of the Commonwealth to the people of Guam. Go, um, hey, Governor. Yes, uh, sir. Hi, Governor. This is Troy. I, I have a, <laughs> when it's Governor, I have a question uh, about the side hand and the rest is about road and the uh, VA. Uh, one is, uh, what is the power supply situation for, let's say, the dialysis center and the hospital over in Saipan? Is it okay? Yes, power system on Saipan is up. It, it, it was not affected. It was uh, affected uh, uh, not last night, right? Mm -hmm. Was there? Was there a power outage last night? But but the hospital has a a a very good uh, backup generator uh, that can okay. run. Uh, uh, it's also uh, it it is also uh, dedicated to a different power plan. Uh, the hospital is dedicated, uh, I mean, that power plant is, is servicing, one power plant servicing the hospital. Uh, okay. So, okay. so our, then, uh, our system uh, was not really interrupted. The dialysis was, the hospital was not impacted at all. Okay, okay, that's good to hear. And then for Rhoda, sir, um, uh, has uh, HSCM or the mayor's office been able to do, uh, I think they call it a windshield assessment of the damages? That's actually that's actually ongoing right now with the mayor down there, and okay. uh, uh, we are gonna we weather permitting, on uh, accessibility permitting. We will uh, we will be sending a, a, a assessment team also uh, on the needs uh, that uh, the mayor had, had asked right away. We will be sending down additional people as the weather. The wind, wind uh, allows us, and as the airport in Rhoda opens, uh, we will be uh, having more flights uh, go down. And, and I know that Joan Region Marianas is also uh, offered to help in that regard. Uh, uh, sir, um, just uh, regarding the infrastructure, uh, is um, what are the reports on home damages? Is the water table still okay? And when can the residents see power restoration in Rhoda? Uh, I, I can't give you a specific on the timeline, but uh, we, we will be sending down, the first thing we will be sending down is two bucket trucks to Rhoda and, and okay. all the resources that CUC has put together already to repair the distribution system. So that's, that's, uh, that's the highest priority right now. And to make sure that the airport is safe and ready to go, uh, everything else will fall in place. The water well are, are fine. The the, the, okay. the reservoirs are fine. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Governor. God bless you. Thank you. Right. Uh, Governor, we were talking about that. Th thankfully, we, have, we don't have any fatalities, right? Uh, but do we do we have any uh, medical assistance needed immediately in in Rota or? Immediate medical evacuation for no, not 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 to our knowledge in our briefings this morning. Uh, that no, there was not no um, uh, even even uh, in the hospital didn't receive any uh, calls last night. So. Okay. Thank you. 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 Th
And Even what, there. what about the supplies or food for the residents? No power for how many days? On uh, that will be an immediate. Uh, That's uh, we've actually put together and and with the mayor, uh, she's putting together the assessment of those needs. Uh, we, we're of course, FEMA is is also in the planning team, and once those those are put together, we'll be able to source them out. And, and like again, the most critical part is the transport. Okay, so we can get those 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 resources together, but we gotta also work with the transporting them. And luckily, I'm hoping that uh, the special assistance for uh, Homeland Security uh, would come out with uh, some good news and. I know that the uh, the uh, admiral is already. I heard him talking about sending a C-130 here uh, to and then to Rhoda, uh, but they need to assess the runways to make sure that those 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 assets can land uh, safely on Rhoda. Uh, on Saipan, we have uh, stories that have been stranded. Uh, Bob, do you have any information regarding them? How they are accommodated and how are they doing? Well, uh, I know that that uh, this morning we we had uh, the executive director for Ports Authority was here, and he uh, he gave us a briefing on what you know appears Saipan appears to be fine, and so is Tinian, and but uh, they are doing that assessment also in Rhoda and, and trying to make sure that they clear that. Um, uh, so. It, 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 it's all going to depend on on the, the, the ports. Um, the C-130 will probably land in Saipan just to, to make a test run. But again, we, we they need to, to get the clearance from FAA. Jim, do you have any questions? Um, Power 99, any questions? Okay. Uh, do you know when you anticipate the Saipan airport being open for? Hopefully by today, by today. And so to go back to your 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 bottom line, the bottom line of your question was the tourism. And so as soon as that's the, the airport is 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 open, I think uh, you know you know those the the, the flights would start, but. Uh, to me, it's just a, a wild experience for a tourist. You know, where, where do you where do you usually experience a typhoon, right? Uh, and it's pretty safe. Saipan uh, got spared, so you know, get extra day here in Saipan. Why not? Now, hotels probably put you up for free. Uh, go out and about and see what uh, possibly a typhoon uh, uh, is all about. Oh, sorry. I think there's some western flights already scheduled starting tomorrow. So. Um, yeah, can I just clarify? Because you mentioned um, the ordinance in Miriam. Can I just clarify? Is that like the, what we're looking at? In that no, that's not. I'm just I'm just putting a uh, sort of a coming up with a theoretical ceiling, because I don't, you know, just looking at the damages on Saipan, the damages on Tinian, uh, just the damages on Rhoda is the one that, that that really needs to be addressed, and and you know that's we haven't really uh, taken a look at. And I'm pretty sure that CPA is going to assess the damage to if there's any damage to the ports, the seaports. Uh, we don't we don't know that. Uh, what is the damage to the airport? We haven't had that. They're doing their own uh, independent uh, assessment, and so it might it might be beyond that. But what I'm saying is that the 30 million dollar threshold that I'm, I'm saying is the ceiling in terms of the the, the aid to the community to get them up and running again and bring some normalcy to them. Governor, when you when you talked to the uh, the governor of Guam, what were the immediate needs there and how do you anticipate helping them? Uh, their power, their infrastructure, their power and water. Uh, and uh, I I understand that uh, their their airport uh, facility, not the runway, huh? <clears throat> the airport facility is, is fairly damaged. Uh, it was inundated with water. Uh, but <clears throat> it 
So I, I don't want to make any assumptions as to what their needs are. I asked her and I offered our help and I asked her to give us a cue and in that regards, where, where the needs are going to be, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that, that it's going to be in the power, the water system, the, the power system, because they have a, a fairly uh, substantial damage to their distribution system. Um, as you all know, we, when, when we got hit by Sudalore, and even Nankred and, and you two uh, uh, folks from Guam were, were here for almost a year with helping us with our power infrastructure. So, you know, it is, it is, uh, it's important also that uh, we reciprocate. Uh, even if uh, they have uh, bigger resources than we are, whatever, just like, just like the, 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 Coast Ryan did. They sent three or four of their, of their best people, power people to help. And so we will, we will be sending down. I talked to, uh, I had a, a brief uh, chat with uh, Simon Sanchez, who happens to also stock uh, off island. And, but we talked and, and said that uh, in his briefing with the uh, GPA, the, they have all the equipments that they need. So we, we don't, they don't need us to send our trucks, or bucket trucks or whatnot. We just, they're most likely going to just need bodies to help, line crews and, and such. So. We do have um, Joey also is with the Homeland Security Office, um, and he'll be here answering questions, but if you do have questions later on, um, I do have, uh, a, a Governor, uh, additional information on CPA. So there are some rescue flights that are being uh, operated. Uh, they did give us an uh, updated press release, so I'll hand that a copy to you after this press conference. There, one more question from anyone? Yeah, I did okay. want to ask about the personnel behind all of this. How many folks have been working around the clock uh, leading up to the typhoon response, and how many people are expected to work after this and, and through other? Uh, I, I, I really don't have that number specifically. Uh, maybe uh, we can get that from Franklin because it's, you know, it's uh, we have uh, all the departments are, are going to be going down to help do the assessments and we'll source out the, the, the manpower needs uh, accordingly and even the resources but I know that they are needing generators they're needing bottled waters right away uh, so it's just transporting those those commodities down to to, to Rhoda and we're, we're trying to get clearance from FAA to have that and that's, that's one of uh, the biggest concern also from from the joint region Marianas the military uh, as far as how many people were here uh, during the uh, the preparations uh, a lot of people uh, I made sure that uh, the department heads and activity heads are here to help, uh, so they might be disappointed because I'm not going to sign overtime for them. <laughs> there, that's part of their job. Uh, and the other, the other ones, uh, mm -hmm. we're we're keeping track. Uh, Franklin and and his team are pretty tight about it. We made made it made it a point to say that every expenditure and every resource that we get on sales or even the uh, personal costs are properly documented uh, with, uh, with the help of uh, FEMA and some of these folks were, were pre-precision here Brian Beck was here uh, and then we have additional two people and uh, the, the, uh, the head of this Typhoon response from FEMA is uh, uh, headquartered in Guam right now because that's where the, the major major damages are. But but he we we're in contact every day with him. Uh, Joey, maybe you can tell us um, maybe you can tell us how it was like last night when you were like monitoring the storm. How many were here? 
Well, let, let me start off by expanding on uh, what the governor had mentioned earlier about the cancellation of conditions and leading into possibly um, the all clear. Um, so the canceling of the, the canceling of conditions uh, right now at 2 p.m. is we're canceling the conditions of Tropical Storm Condition 1 of Saipan and Tinian as of 2 p.m. And that, that justifies and supports that uh, we do not expect any more damaging winds um, within the area, although we advise um, the community that there's, pos there's possible strong gusty winds and heavy rain, torrential rain that are associated with some feeder band activity um, with this system. Um, again, we, we, we're using the, the times when we cancel the conditions to send our, our emergency response teams out to assess you know, our critical infrastructures and our lifelines, pretty much our roads, our power, uh, our water, and so forth. Um, again, for Rhoda, um, they are continuing to do their assessments. Uh, as the governor had mentioned, we are looking at um, canceling conditions later on um, today. Um, again, on the advice of on the assessments that the governor will receive and, and assess. But um, really, um, to answer your question about how it was last night or throughout the night. Um, we're fortunate that just as in you two, um, we did not lose communications with the National Weather Service. Um, we continue to synchronize our, our efforts with them, with, with everyone here. Uh, we have daily um, synchronized meetings with Mayor Hokuk and her command team and we ensure that um, all these efforts are well coordinated and, uh, and the governor puts his full support down to the people of Rhoda.